This dress has pockets and pockets. I we love them. Like two spacious pockets in the back. We're obsessed with them. Thanks. It has pockets. Who doesn't love a good pocket? Pockets in women's jeans suck. Why don't we women have pockets today? Or why don't we have good pockets today? That is what we're going to dive into. Is there one direct hard answer? No, there never is with these sorts of things. It's a little nuanced. It's a little, little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of like, yeah. But I can say a couple of facts that we need to establish. First things first, women have always had pockets in their clothing. Full stop, end of discussion. This is not actually up for debate. When you look at historical fact and historical record, women had pockets. If you see an article, a video, anything where someone is trying to say, women did not have pockets, they're lying and they're full of shit. If you would like to know more about the history of pockets in women's clothing, Bernadette actually has already done a video covering everything up until 1920. So that's why this video video is also going to pick up at 1920 because Bernadette has already covered the topic. I don't really want to repeat it. The next thing we need to understand is that while I'm going to be covering the past 100 years, my emphasis in this video is going to be on the 1920s and on the last 20 years. We need to look at how it started and we need to look at our more recent history to understand where we are today. <laughs> biggest reasons why women's pockets shifted so much in the last 100 years is because our silhouette has shifted. Previously, pre-1920, let's say, women's clothing was built and created around an artificial structure. The ideal female shape was completely surrounded and created through artifice. And what I mean by this is through corsetry, boning, hoop skirts, bustle pads, padding for the backside and for the chest. If you look throughout history, up until 1920, the ideal female shape was created through engineering, basically. How can STEM not change the world? I mean, it's everywhere. And it was not actually a reflection of the natural, actual human body of that individual person. The 1920s is when we see the beginning of the actual body becoming the fashion. To be able to wear the clothing that was fashionable for women, you needed to have a certain body type to successfully pull it off. And that's the era that we are still in, where the actual physical human body is what is or is not in fashion. Hello trauma. Because of this, clothing has now become more fitted because again, it's supposed to highlight the natural body. It's not meant to fit over an artificial body shape. That means that in the 1920s, skirts are getting narrower, they're getting shorter, and frankly, there's just not space really for the pockets of the 1890s, which could hold a champagne bottle. <laughs> this focus on silhouette has continued throughout history when skirts get bigger in the late 30s and again in like the 1950s and 60s we see pockets being a completely normal part of a woman's outfit and they just are are they going to be up to the standard of the victorian era no but are they there yes so this ebb and flow of the ideal garment shape with the ideal female shape and how they work together dictates whether or not we simply have room for pockets of the samples buyers see, only those for which orders are placed are put into mass production. The next thing we need to take into consideration is fabric and comparing men's fabrics to women's fabrics for our clothing because we essentially wear different types of fabrics, or at least we did. Nowadays, it's a little bit more crossover, but we also dress much more gender neutral today than we ever really have ever in modern history. Traditionally with menswear, what we're seeing are sturdier fabrics, thicker fabrics, hardier fabrics, fabrics that can actually hold a lot of weight. And what I'm specifically referencing here is the three-piece suit. For the most part, for the past 100 years, the man's three-piece suit hasn't really changed. Women's clothing, on the other hand, has always erred on the side of softer, lighter, drapier, and more sheer, more delicate fabrics. These delicate fabrics simply do not hold up to the weight of what you could put in a pocket. Or sometimes they simply just shouldn't be made into pockets. So if we look at 1920s fashions, what we're gonna see is this rise of really soft, delicate fabrics being used for entire dresses. Frankly, a lot of them kind of defy 
physics. How can STEM not change the world? I mean, it's everywhere. And there's just no way you could really put a pocket in there without it potentially just ruining the fabric. I'm here to talk to you today about the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. If you are not familiar with Skillshare, well, let me tell you about them. They are an online learning community with thousands of classes on all sorts of different things, whether it is drawing, video making, photo editing, stoicism. But Skillshare doesn't just have creative classes, they also have plenty of classes focused on careers. Which brings me to the class that I've currently been taking, which is Doctor, YouTuber, Time Management, Productivity Extraordinaire. We all love them, we all watch him on YouTube. Ali Abdal's class on Notion. I've actually been using Notion for a couple of years now. I am low-key obsessed with it, but I don't feel like I'm using it to the best of its ability. And I've actually really been loving the course. He's already taught me things that I didn't even use or know or realize what they were used for in Notion. I love Skillshare. I mean, I just love it. You just learn stuff. I don't know. I'm such a nerd, guys. I'm just like, wait, this is like the best thing ever. <laughs> the first 1,000 of my viewers who click the link in the description below will get one month free of Skillshare to try, so that way you can learn all the things. And I want to give a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. Now let's get back to pockets. Pockets? Pockets. It has pockets. 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 It has pockets. From which as many as a hundred dresses are cut at one time. The job of assembling and sewing is let out on contract by most large dress firms. Pre-1900, clothing was made usually fairly locally. Uh, so you would go to your local tailor or dressmaker and you had a direct relationship with the person who made your clothing, thus allowing you to make decisions about how you wanted your clothing to look, fit, and feel. So if you wanted pockets, you had pockets. You didn't have to fight for it, you didn't have to argue for it. You'd be like, hey, yeah, can we add a pocket here and a pocket here? And the dressmaker would be like, sure, sounds great, love that for you. And then they would put the pocket in. Nowadays, we don't have that localization. We don't have that customization. We are subjects to late stage capitalistic hellscape. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. No longer are we creating clothing that is at least semi-custom fitted to you, but we're producing clothing in rudimentary sizes that are kind of just based off of feelings and how the weather looks to sell as quickly as possible. Garment workers who three decades ago were notoriously underpaid and exploited are today protected by a powerful union whose representatives conscientiously police the industry. Mass manufacturers don't care enough to pay their employees livable wages and put them in safe working conditions. Why on earth would you think that they would take the time to make sure that women's clothing had nice pockets in it? It's so much easier to sew a straight line than it is to sew in a pocket in a seam. Pockets, it uses more fabric, it takes up more physical time, and there's more steps involved. I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just saying that's capitalism, baby. <laughs> like, they don't give a shit about you having pocket. And so basically from the turn of the 20th century up till today, that's what we live in. That's what we exist in. With a membership of more than 375,000, the International Ladies Garment Workers Union, ILGWU, is one of the strongest and most enlightened unions in the country. Under the leadership of David Dubinsky, it has brought great benefits to both workers and employers. Now with that being said, I have noticed, especially over the past few years, with the rise of smaller designers and smaller retailers who have direct relationships with their customer base, and they hear us say, we want pockets. And so they're able to make those accommodations because the demand is there. It is in my experience that pockets are actually much more common today for women's clothing than they were even like 10 years ago. It is actually really uncommon and rare for me to have a garment, especially a lower garment, like pants, skirt, or a dress that doesn't have pockets on it. Like, it, like most of the time I'll stick my hand assuming there will be a pocket. And if there isn't, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> because I've gotten so used to having pockets in my clothing. So when people tell me they don't have pockets in their clothing, I, genuinely, I am confused. Now, if you're still buying from super fast fashion retailers, are you gonna find pockets? Maybe. Are you not gonna find pockets? Probably. But that is also completely indicative of what kind of manufacturing situation they are there in. I think because of demand and just how the economy will work. We are seeing more pockets in women's clothing today, but this initial drop off or the poor quality or the really tiny size also comes down to just how we manufacture clothing today and the issues within it. 
because it sucks. It's not good. Hey, I just want to pop on here real fast is to make the point that in this video originally I had filmed a whole section about handbags and purses and it ended up being over like 10 minutes long, which just made this video way too freaking long. No one wants to watch a video that long. So what I've actually decided to do is make a whole video about the history of purses that will be coming very, very soon. Basically the TLDR is that the handbag industry did not purposely remove pockets from women's garments in order to force women to buy more purses. That's nonsense. <laughs> like that's just it's really dumb. But if you want to know more about the history of purses and handbags, I will have a video out about it. It is really cool. So with that, let's get back to pockets. They're either too small for any practical use or entirely non-existent. And it's not for lack of wanting. We got to talk about gender here because we can't talk about pockets without talking about gender. Since men's garments essentially haven't really changed over the past couple hundred years, definitely in the past 100 years, how men's clothing is fit is engineered in a way. How can STEM not change the world? I mean, it's everywhere. To accommodate large pockets to hold larger items. And since men cannot carry bags because they have been stupidly gendered. Here's a cool thing. You can fit a whole burger in this. What? I smuggled the burger into a movie. Yeah, of course they're still going to have good pockets because they don't literally have any other option. So that kind of brings me to today. But we're not seeing men wearing three-piece suits, so they themselves have actually removed a lot of pockets from their clothing because they're not wearing clothing that can handle the pockets anymore. Men's pockets are so much better than women's pockets. It's that actually true and so I went and actually measured my trousers and jeans compared to my husband's. First in this grand experiment are the skinny jeans. My husband's wearing a European style skinny jean. I'm wearing jeans from Target. Obviously my Target jean pockets are terrible. His are actually the smallest though for all of his jeans. You see my phone is sticking out. Next is our regular jeans. He's wearing Lucky Brand. I'm wearing Everlane jeans. Mine are still a little bit smaller but not by much but you can also see how much tighter my jeans are compared to his. His is just a looser cut. There's just more room for pockets. Finally, as our chinos, I thought this one was really interesting because these are looser cut pants for me. And so my pockets are actually huge. I think they're basically the same as his chinos. His are from Madewell. Mine are Everlane. Finally, bonus round, my boyfriend jeans by Madewell. Bam, baby. Plenty of room. Literally, boyfriend jeans, I guess. Okay, I'm back again. I just want to give a quick little like disclaimer here. The section we're getting ready to get into talks a lot about weight, body, and size. The concept of dressing for one's body type, this can be really triggering for people who have disordered eating issues, who are dealing with body dysmorphia issues, or just in generally uncomfortable having these conversations, which are totally valid. It's kind of hard for me to talk about them too, but they're really important within this larger conversation of pockets. So I just want to give you a fair warning that that's what we're getting ready to talk about. If you don't want to watch this stuff because it might be uncomfortable for you. Here is the time code to skip to. Let's get to the nitty gritty of it. Oh. No, no, just get out of the kitchen. You guys can't see what we're making. We did experience a war against pockets in our lifetime. And I think this is why we as women go through life today assuming that we don't have pockets. And, and here's what I mean by that. Magazines for women, including for teenage girls, 17 Magazine, I'm talking to you specifically, weaponized pockets against the female body. I shit you not, my guys. So the search hits on pockets led to basically three essential types of hits. The first one being advertisements for Hot Pockets. Hot Pockets! The second being putting money in your pocket, money saving tips and tricks with using pocket is like the colloquialism. The third being jeans for everybody. Okay, pretty innocuous. Jeans for your body type. Find pants that flatter. Dress 10 pounds lighter. <laughs> best jeans for your butt, the best blues for your bod, and more. Every single article, every single one talked about pockets, and they were without fail about using or removing pockets to make you look thinner. Don't wear pockets if your booty's big, it'll just make it look bigger. Don't wear pockets on your hips if you're hippie, it'll make your hips look bigger. And I don't know about you, obviously there are every body type under the sun, but when I went through high school, I was slim. I think I I wore a size four. I thought I was so fat. We were taught to fear pockets because pockets equaled fat, which equals ugly, which equals no value in the 2000s. And it's all bullshit. And all of those magazines, 17 especially, because we all know Cosmo's garbage, owes us an apology for that shit. That shit's traumatizing to read. This is not some plot from the handbag industry. This is not some secret evil 
genius plan from the Victorian era? No. So if you're told not to wear pockets because they make them they make you look fat, you're not gonna buy jeans with pockets on them because you don't wanna look fat. We, we know this whole cycle that goes through our brains. We all went through it. In addition to all of that, from a logical perspective, jeans got so low that we literally also lost real estate for pockets. So not only were they weaponized against us, we literally didn't have space. I bought high school trauma and we're gonna look at them. So for this video, I realized that if we're gonna sit here and we're gonna talk about early 2000s jeans, that we need to look at a pair. I swear I own these. Okay, just so you guys know this frame on the hem, this means it's good. Like we wanted that. These are from American Eagle. I have personally with my expertise dated them to circa 2003. So I specifically looked for jeans that have pockets because they did exist. They're just patch pockets. So they're completely useless. Though I will say these would have held a flip phone. What you did is you actually like did the flip phone over it like that, just so we're clear. Oh my God, there'd be no way in hell. <laughs> they literally would go there like right at my hip bones. So I'm measuring from the top of the waist to the bottom and it is basically five inches. Okay, so these jeans are the same Everlane jeans I was wearing for the regular jean pocket test with my husband. From waist to crotch is about 12 inches and then the opening is eight and a quarter, which is the same as the overall height of the low-waisted jeans, which is just bonkers if you ask me. The normal measurement for clothing between your waist and your traditional hip is anywhere between six to seven inches. So a loss of two inches is actually huge. That's a huge amount of fabric lost. And that is also taken directly out of your ability to put in pockets. Once we moved away from the flare of the 2000s and boot cut, we moved into the skinny jeans of the late 2000s and 20 teens. And just like we discussed, skinny jeans also do not really accommodate space for pockets, especially since the point of skinny jeans are to be fitted to the leg to show off your body. And when you have things in your pockets, it causes a visual irregularity within the silhouette. And when the human body is the the silhouette and the human body is what is fashionable, you don't want to do that. So it makes sense, again, that pockets would be limited because they can create wrinkles, bulk, bulges, and things that could be considered unsightly for the fashionable silhouette. So with that, between the changes of fashionable silhouettes for women, with the focus on the natural human body as the fashion, which is its own problem, to the differences of fabrics used in feminine clothing versus masculine clothing, to the shifts in mass manufacturing and the moving away from localized clothing manufacturing, to the weaponization of pockets at the beginning of the 21st century. All of this to say, where we are with pockets in women's clothing, it, when you lay it all out, it's it makes sense and it, it's logical. But that's not to say that we don't have pockets. We do. We have pockets now in leggings that will literally hold a massive iPhone 14. We have jeans today that will hold our large phones and wallets and women's clothing, in part because the shift in our fashions have changed too in the last few years. And we also have the buyer demand. We are so vocal about pockets that it has literally become a meme. Pocket, pocket. I'm not gonna say we don't have pockets in clothing today because to me that is factually incorrect. I have great pockets in my clothes. I still choose to put everything into a bag because I find it extremely practical and logical. And I honestly, the weight of this is now just like a thunder shirt for me. If I'm out and about and I don't have that on, I don't have that weight, I, I get like an anxiety attack. But the history of pockets is nuanced. And I think that our concept of pockets honestly can be traced back to the bullshit of the early 2000s. I'm sure some of you all will disagree with me because damn it, you just want better pockets to which I say, buy Madewell jeans, you'll be happier and Everling. And with that, if you did like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That does help me and you with the YouTube algorithm because it knows what you like, it tells YouTube what you like to watch. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so already. And with that, I will see you all back here next time with another video. Bye. Hey, you want to be on prices, right? Come on down. Guys, I've literally filmed this video three times. Which does not actually literally imply that you're sexually attracted to cities. Anyways. Hello. Coming up with me. No, how do I want to wear that, Griff? I don't know how. I want to say, you're New York. Do you want to do career? Here, do you want to tell people how do you feel?